Yeah, roll it and then give me a nod when it's rolling. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this. Hi, welcome to the photography studio. Today we're gonna to be looking at the specialized setup for photographing metal. And we've got our two lights set up on the side to push light in through the side of the light tent. And then we've got two lights set up on top and uh, that should surround this whole area with light filling the inside with a really nice diffuse light. So uh, next we're gonna get into what, you know, how we're gonna set up the camera. And as you can see right here, you can, uh, we've got our pendant suspended from two supports on either side with a couple of clothespins, and that's what we're using to hang our pendant because pendants are gonna hang naturally on a person when they're wearing it, so we wanna photograph it in the way that it's gonna be worn. I've got my camera set up on the aperture priority mode, which is the A on the mode dial up here, and then that lets me choose uh, an aperture, which is the amount of depth of field that's gonna be in this image. So right now it's set to four, and I'm gonna want a little bit more depth of field on this image. So I'm gonna take it up to F8, somewhere around the middle, and that's gonna give me a 1 8 of a second exposure time, which is definitely gonna mean that I need to be on a tripod. There, so there's our shot. So the, the gray of the background is a little bit darker than I would like. So what I'm gonna do next is, because I'm on an aperture priority mode, I choose the aperture, it picks the shutter speed based on you know what it wants to do. So I have to tell it to brighten up the picture. So I'm pressing this little AV plus or minus button to bring up the meter so that it actually makes a brighter image. So hopefully you can see that getting brighter in the background. And with this camera on live view, what you see is what you get. So that picture with all the stuff around it should match the actual picture that I take. Now, the last thing I wanna do is check to make sure that I'm really in focus. So I'm just gonna focus right here, make sure it's in focus. And then on this camera, I can also zoom in to super check my focus. So I've zoomed in on the back and then with the focus ring up here, I can make sure that that's exactly where I want it to be. And then zoom out of the back of the camera and take my picture. So that's it for that. Now, because that item technically could be worn from two different sides, we're gonna flip it around and photograph it from the other side. <clears throat> So now that we've flipped it around, you can see that usually when you engage with the piece, it wiggles and wobbles until it settles down. So I have to wait until the picture stops moving, in essence, before I take the photograph. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll try to support the item to get it to stop rotating, but it's usually more trouble than it's worth and usually better just to wait so even if I photographed it right now, because the shutter speed is so long, it's gonna catch that little tiny bit of swinging that's happening in that image. Okay, so we've got our piece turned around and generally every time you do that, it won't be lined up in the frame perfectly anymore. It might be close, but generally you'll have to move your tripod or adjust your image a little bit. So I'm looking at the corners right here to see if this image is in fact uh, symmetrical in the frame. And so it needs a slight swing to the right to get the V to touch the same spots on the top of the frame on both sides. So something like that. I really try to be really careful about this. Now, I can crop that later so I'm close enough that I can live with it, but that's kind of the standard that we're going for. We've put a pendant up on our support system, and one of the things I wanna illustrate here is the angle that the chain creates with the amount of tension that you put onto it. And so if you could imagine this hanging on to a normal body, it's probably going to create a sharper, more of a right angle kind of V, and possibly even as far as something like this, that that's probably more of a natural angle for the V of the necklace to hang at. So you, you, you want to mimic as best as possible how it's going to look on the human form. And so that's just one of the things that I like to be really careful around. It's wobbling around a little bit, but as you can see, it's coming up and it's touching 
uh, the upper corners, which is a pleasant composition. And now I just need to decide where am I going to put the pendant in relation to the whole frame. So whether I want to have it be slightly up and dead center in the middle or have it hang down and create kind of a bit of a fake neck line in essence. You can imagine the neckline and a chest in that space. So there's our photo. It's a little off center. Um, so I'm just going to make a few more adjustments. So keep in mind how much angle you've got going on in your necklace. And if you need more angle, bring the uh, supports closer together. If you need less angle, you can just pull them apart. So we've changed our perspective now. We're a little bit higher than the object. And what I'm trying to do is mimic the kind of angle that I would have if I was looking at this while it was being worn by somebody else. It would be down slightly below my eye level. And I'm just looking at it from the side so that I can see into the little eyelet where the chain passes through because it's kind of one of the construction details that you can't see if you're looking at it straight on. Um, plus this helps to create some depth in the object. It takes it out of a two-dimensional plane and you can see the side of the bezel and it helps it to create a little bit more form. So we'll just take that shot while we're here. And if we compare that shot to the other shot where we're looking at it straight on, we get a very different kind of effect. It's a little bit more uh, dimensionality to it and the other one's a little bit more flat and symmetrical. So this is a slightly more asymmetrical composition. Personally, I like it. So now that we've got the back exposed, we can see that that has lots of intention and design behind it and definitely something that we should photograph. Perfect. So if you look at this image over here, we've got our earrings fairly close to each other up there, but when we look at them in the frame, they are not very friendly to each other. They look like they're not happy with each other right now. So we need to get them close together, uh, close enough that they look like they like each other and ideally you can get two different shapes out of them so that somebody can understand how they look on one side and on the other one they can look at how does it look on the other side. So once these finally settle down and we can take this picture I think this will look pretty good. I'm just going to pull back just a little bit to make sure that I have the entire hook visible because people are going to want to know what these earrings uh, are made out of, how are they going into my ears, and uh, what type of hooks are they, and how well are the hooks made? If they were handmade, are they unique? Do they look nice? So this looks pretty good. And that's why you wait for them to settle down, because it's blurry. Okay, so we did our test shot, and when I zoomed into the test shot, the back of the earrings are slightly out of focus. The front of the earrings in focus, but the back of the earrings out of focus. And that's because my depth of field is only about half of what I can pull out of this lens. So I'm at f8 right now, and I'm going to go to somewhere up around f16, but my shutter speed is dropped to 1.3 seconds. With wavering earrings, this is not going to be a good thing. We'll do a quick test shot, but I want to show you how I would adjust this to get a faster shutter speed. So without changing the aperture, I'm going to go up to the ISO function and I'm going to go to 200, which will quicken my shutter speed two times faster, two times faster again, and two times faster again. And now I'm at 800 ISO and my shutter speed has come up to a sixth of a second. So I'm shooting at F16 and one sixth of a second. You should see this be a much faster shutter speed. Perfect. Now if I zoom in on that, we should get an increased amount of depth of field. And as you can see, the back of the earring is in focus, the front of the earring is in focus. The whole thing is still because they're not moving and the shutter speed's fast enough to neutralize any amount of waver that's happening at this point.
So we'll, we'll keep shooting all our earrings at 800 ISO if we have to. So here we're using a rock to help to stand up this really heavy ring uh, in a way that's not uh, levitating it or doing anything that seems impossible or like we're doing something with Photoshop and we've got our composition lined up here on the camera and what we're going to do now is we're going to try to adjust the depth of field which if I take this shot we've got f16 from our last shot which has the whole rock in focus and I quite like the look that we get here uh, when we're at the focus mode where we're essentially focusing at f2.8. So I'm going to roll the depth of field back to the minimum depth of field and then I'm going to take a shallow depth of field shot so that rock that's in behind is blurry and out of focus and that looks great. So that way we're getting a contrast of sharpness to blurry as well as a contrast between light and dark and uh, it really helps to separate the item from the object behind it. So we don't think that that's part of the item itself. So uh, here we've got a brooch that we've just laid on the background. It works pretty well to give us a sense of how the brooch is made, um, but it's not very active. And when generally when I lay things down on the paper, it kind of makes them look like they're sleeping. So we're going to take the same thing and this time we're just going to lay it up on our rock and see if we can't get a slightly more active kind of shot. And it's also making it a little bit brighter silver wise. It's adding some highlights and really improving the lighting. There we go. And Awesome. Now, as you can see, some of the brooch is starting to fall out of focus and there's probably some critical elements that we need to see there. So I'm just going to rotate my aperture dial to get a slightly more depth of field. We're still at a 40th of a second, so we should have lots of uh, shutter speed here. So that should give us more depth of field, it's more in focus. In fact, I'm just going to go zoom in and have a look at that real close see if it's actually in focus. Yeah, we've got enough focus. Now we could add some more. We could go up to f16 just to be sure and have a shot with super adequate depth of field. I think that looks pretty nice. Cut.